And the publisher wanted to get the message out, and we thought this was the most convenient way to do it. It's quite a readable book, I think. It is, indeed. Uh, interesting title, Good Intentions Corrupted. The good intentions were? Good intentions were this oil, so-called oil for food program, which was designed to sustain the Iraqi population nutritionally, medical-wise, while there were enough sanctions on Iraq to guard against Saddam having money to buy weapons of mass uh, destruction and to keep pressure on the government while saving mm. the citizens. Didn't the everybody citizens. assume that he'd find a way to corrupt the process? Well, people were concerned about it, but the program was designed to minimize that difficulty. It was not designed, as it turned out, well enough, but I, I think it was a very difficult thing to do, but it was not well managed. That, what the That's investigation, what the investigation discovered, about. not only mal-administered, but corruptly administered in places. And one of the interesting things is what you mentioned, a number of international companies that were involved in either buying oil or selling humanitarian goods, which were permitted under the program in general, under surveillance, managed to pay very sizable kickbacks to the government, which were illicit. Including and, American companies. Including some American companies, but many more non-American companies. Uh, and about half the companies that participated in the program, one way or another, about half of them were making illicit payments. I want to make one big point. Despite the corruption, despite the fact that a lot of people abused the power of their office, despite there were a lot of people in the private sector who yes. showed no ethics about right. dealing with a dictator. That's right. There was some good accomplishment. There was. Uh, we reviewed the evidence of the nutritional or medical situation in Iraq before the program, and indeed, what was thought to be in seri serious was serious. There were evidence of growing malnutrition. And the caloric intake of the Iranians went up. It wasn't very fancy food, but nonetheless, their caloric uh, content was maintained. I don't think the medical side got very much better, but it stopped deteriorating. So, yes, the program in that sense achieved its purpose. Is there one villain at the top of all this? No. I, you know, you can look in all the directions. If the member countries themselves, including the United States, closed their eyes to some of this, and there was disagreement. Why would they do that? Well, some of it I wondered about. Some of it was explicable, but uh, what surprised me was things that were explicable, done under the pressures of the moment, were never disclosed. It was all kind of hidden up. And, I, you know, it, it just left a bad taste in a lot of people's more than a bad taste. But uh, some of the actions taken by our own government, I, I think, were inappropriate. Like? Like the major source of money to uh, Saddam and the government was outright smuggling, which was not really part of the program, but it was against the sanctions. And it became known, it was, became fairly obvious, yeah. and no action was taken Why by not? the Security Council. Well, there was disagreement in the Security Council among people who wanted to and take strong degrees positions. of relationships with Saddam. And, but in our case, uh, we apparently thought some smuggling to friendly companies, so-called, uh, Jordan and Turkey, would be acceptable, but it was kind of hidden. I don't understand why the smuggling to Syria, which doesn't come under the label of friendly con countries, was permitted to go on, but it did. Now, were they fully informed? They must have known something was going on. Did they know as much was going on? Maybe not. But that's where the part of the administration of the UN came in. Why weren't they more alert? Why didn't they insist upon some action? Kofi Annan. What is his responsibility. Well, he is responsible. you seem to have grappled with this, because you may like him, because uh, you believe he's a good man. Absolutely. But, I, but what's the but? The but was uh, the program was not administered well by the Secretariat. There was cor some corruption within the Secretariat, maybe not as much as some people thought, but unfortunately the man designated by Kofi Annan to run the program was corrupted. and took illicit payments indirectly. Uh, not to his knowledge? Not to—I don't think Kofi Annan knows that he was corrupted, but, but 
did he run a disciplined secretariat? I think the answer has to be no. So that's bad management. And that is bad management, and I think it's been uh, systemic in the U.N. What this program disclosed in the management of the program is a very difficult program. A lot of money, $110 million ran through this program, bigger than anything they'd ever done before. But it exposed weaknesses in, in the organization that are endemic. Will they be changed? Well, the, <laughs> the purpose in doing this, so far as I was concerned, the purpose of this book is to encourage change. There has been some change. Has there been enough? No. In perhaps the most complete interview he's done on this subject, he talked with me at this table. Roll tape. This is one of two comments from the Secretary General. It's been also very painful to watch the... Uh, uh, the uh, politicized uh, campaign against the UN because of mis uh, misconduct or maladministration uh, uh, by certain staff members. But in fact, when you look at the record and the review, the, man the report of Volcker, there were problems. And maybe I regret that I haven't paid, had, I, I wish I had paid attention to the problems earlier. But when you look at the report, there was uh, problems. There was some. Uh, there was ma ma misadministration. But when it comes to corruption and fraud, I dare say, the problem was with the capitals and the companies, because after that extensive and exhaustive report, only one staff member is presumed to have uh, is alleged to have taken one hundred fifty thousand dollars. All the others were the companies. Uh, uh, sitting in their capitals, making deals with Saddam. And in fact, in all this discussion, you don't even hear the name of Saddam Hussein, who was the one really making the deals with these companies. And uh, sometimes when I look back, I, I am amazed that we are surprised that Saddam could cheat and try to manipulate the system. He says two things, really. One is, why are we surprised that he would, Saddam would try to cheat and manipulate a system, number one? He's right about that. He's right about that. And Two, was... he says there was only one person in the UN uh, that was corrupt, and that the real problem here lay with the member states and private enterprise. Well, not uh, member states, but whoever did business. I think he's right that the blame can be widely distributed, yeah. but you can't avoid the conclusion that the Secretariat. Uh, was part of the responsibility. Yeah. Uh, the Secretary General's description in the Charter of the UN is Chief Administrative 